what's up everybody hopefully all of you are doing well today i'm going to show you how to make a really easy but delicious brown butter pecan ice cream and that's with or without a machine let's get into it let's start by toasting up about six to eight ounces of pecans in a dry skillet over about medium high heat and mine i'm going to keep them moving because i have quite a bit in this small pan <laughs> You're only gonna to toast the pecans about a minute or two just until they smell nice and nutty. Right after I finish with the pecans, I'm gonna go ahead and combine some heavy cream and some milk and put it in a heavy bottom saucepan. Now I'm gonna take half of my pecans and I'm gonna add them to the milk mixture. Next, I'm gonna bring the milk up to a high simmer, not quite a hard boil, but I just want the mixture to get nice and blended with the pecans in there. And then I'm going to turn it completely down to like medium low for about five minutes and then we're gonna turn it completely off. From this point, we're gonna cover the pot and allow the pecans to steep in the milk and heavy cream for about an hour. So since we have to let the pecans steep for an hour, go find something else to do for about 45 minutes. Actually, the pecans can steep even longer if you want. They can go up to two hours, but I just said an hour. And then the last 15 minutes of that steeping time, I come back and I separate my eggs and I brown my butter. So I have about four tablespoons of butter in a small skillet. It's the same skillet that I browned the pecans in. And I'm just gonna whirl that around over medium heat just until the butter starts to turn brown. Okay, a light golden color. You don't want it to get too dark. See, that's right about where we wanna be. You have to watch this closely because it happens in about two or three minutes. Turn it off and then you do need to remove that butter and put it in a container or a bowl because if you leave it there, it's gonna continue to cook. So just go ahead and remove that and put it in a nice bowl. So my butter is done, I'm gonna set it to the side and let it cool while I whisk in my granulated sugar and my brown sugar right into those egg yolks. For the exact measurements to this recipe, check out gdseasoning.com. The link to the recipe will be below the video in the description area. So now it's time to strain the pecans from the milk mixture. I'm gonna do that. Um, these pecans have given us all they can give, especially if you let it steep for about two hours. Um, the texture of the pecans have changed at this time and to use them further in the recipe is just going to, you're gonna be sorry you did it. So just discard the pecans and move on. <laughs> to the egg mixture, I'm going to add the cooled brown butter right in there, every bit of it, and stir that in. And those little brown flecks that come from the brown butter is gonna add a beautiful color, as you can see, to the ice cream or the custard. Next, we're going to slowly whisk in some of the heavy cream and milk because we don't want to scramble those eggs right away. So what we're doing is tempering. You're gonna add a little bit of the hot um, milk and cream and just whisk it in to bring the egg mixture up to temperature. And then you're going to add the rest of it. Now what you're gonna do is take the custard and add it back to the pot where we heated up the milk and the cream. And we're gonna allow that to come up to a simmer until it thickens. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of kosher salt to the custard. Now, I used regular salted butter in the beginning of this recipe, and because of that, I didn't have to add as much as you see here, but it is to taste. You can taste it and see if you wanna add some more or not, but I'll give you some notes in the recipe that you can read on how to control the salt in this uh, ice cream. After the custard simmers for about five to eight minutes, you'll see it starts to thicken and it coats the back of a spoon where I can run my finger through it and the custard doesn't move, it's ready. Go ahead and turn it off and I give it a nice good whisk one more time before I strain it right into the ice bath. Now the reason why we're straining this custard is because we want to catch any little bits of egg that may have cooked when we made the custard, any stubborn pieces of brown sugar that didn't want to dissolve. You need to strain all that through so you have a nice, beautifully smooth custard. Now in certain recipes, ice baths are used to cool things quickly. The goal here is to get the custard down to an internal temperature of 40 degrees when it's red with an instant read thermometer. Just to let you guys know, I did have to change my ice and water in that bowl about two or three times just so I can keep that bowl nice and cold. So you may have to do that throughout this process. I did add some vanilla into the custard and then I just poured it into my baking dish. And then we're gonna head straight to the freezer and we're gonna start our freezing process for the first hour. Now for those of you who actually have an ice cream maker and you're using this recipe, what you're gonna do from this point is cover and refrigerate the custard for about two hours up to overnight and then follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to make the ice cream. 
Now here's the custard after the first hour of being in the freezer. As you can see, it's starting to freeze a little bit on the side, so I have a very small whisk and I'm just moving it from the side to give it a good mix. Throughout this whole process, I usually go back and forth between a whisk and a heavy silicone spatula. Here's what the ice cream looked like after the second hour of freezing. See, now I had to move to my bigger whisk because the ice cream is starting to thicken more, starting to freeze more. And again, I'm trying to move the ice cream from the sides to mix it in with the ice cream that's in the middle. As you can see, it's starting to resemble the texture of a loose soft serve ice cream at this point. Just a few minutes before the third cycle is done for freezing, I'm gonna chop up my pecans. I divided them because I didn't know how much I was gonna put into the custard. But as you can see, after three hours of freezing and us going in there every hour to get it, this is what it looks like. Almost nice and firm. Now all we have to do is fold in our other half of our toasted pecans. Under supervision, of course, this would be a good project for the kids to do since it's summertime. They'll get to use their skills as far as reading and following a recipe, and it's gonna call on some of their math skills because of the measurements. And at the end, they get to eat some ice cream. I mean, how bad is that? <laughs> now all we have to do is place the ice cream into one or two airtight containers. Make sure they have a really nice tight lid and place them in the freezer for a minimum of four hours to overnight. Now here comes the best part, serving up yourself one or two small scoops of this rich ice cream. And when I say rich, I mean that. So approach it lightly. <laughs> you can taste that brown butter, the sweetness of the sugars, the vanilla, and best of all, the pecans. Baby. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming and cooking with me and hanging out. You know I appreciate it. Don't forget this recipe along with others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.